So I've been asked to share a message of thanks for our future on this afternoon. Amen. Amen. And you know, because the future is hidden in so many ways from us, with so many unforeseen variables, having a gratitude that connects to what is yet to come can be challenging. But I'm glad that I can stand here today, thankful that I have some future promises from God in our heart that I can reach for in faith and hope. Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14 reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So this letter to the church of Philippi was written by the Apostle Paul. What I found interesting about this letter is that it was written during a time period when Paul was in the custody of the Romans. Yeah. He was locked up, <laughs> bound in chains, <laughs> under house arrest. Paul is writing a letter to encourage the people of Philippi while he is in prison. Yes, yes. Knowing this scriptural context gives us great perspective of how our attitude should be even when we find ourselves in unfavorable circumstances. See, the mark of everyone's life is different, but if I can personalize this in this moment, the last few years have been uncomfortable, to say the least. Maybe not as uncomfortable as what the Apostle Paul was experiencing when he wrote this letter, but there were some unforeseen circumstances that God took me through that I would have never willingly signed up for. Wow. And I'm sure the Apostle Paul didn't willingly sign up for what he endured when he decided to pick up his cross and follow Christ. Still in all, in his season of discomfort, Paul had a mental disposition that there was more than God had in store for him. Paul had something to reach, hope, and look forward to. It was not the end when he was in prison in Rome. It was just another leg of the journey. In the text, Paul said, I, he's speaking about himself, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. The NIV says, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. And the Amplified translation reads, I do not consider that I have captured it and made it my own. Wow. This shows us that Paul knows he has not yet arrived. Y'all catch that? He locked up right now, but he knows he has not yet arrived, right? The next part is the part I want you to lock in on because he is a prisoner by the world's definition. Yes. Paul says, one thing I do, he reaches for the things before come on, him, come on. pressing toward the mark of high calling in God, of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Now listen, listen. It would have been easy for Paul to be discouraged. Easy. Mm -hmm. For him to be frustrated. Easy. Yes. For him to be disappointed, burnt out, and resigned to his fate. Paul could have just put it on autopilot for the rest of the journey, come on. but instead... Paul believed that there was something beyond this moment that was worth reaching yes. for. And he was determined to obtain it. Paul didn't give in to his past or present. He didn't give in to the power of his past or his present to discourage him from reaching the prize that awaited him right. in the future. Yes. Paul was a change. But those chains couldn't stop him from reaching. Amen. Paul was under 24-hour surveillance, yes. but that surveillance couldn't stop him from reaching. Matter of fact, Paul had a thorn in his flesh, but that thorn in his flesh couldn't stop him from reaching. Paul was shipwrecked, but that shipwrecking never stopped him from reaching. Paul was snake bitten, but when he was bitten by the snake, he shook it off and he kept going. He kept going reaching. Paul was stoned and left for dead. Yeah. 
heart. So even when he experienced worldly adversity, he could reach beyond the flesh's capacity with the spirit of God that lived within him. Did y'all hear that? Even when he had ran out of options in the natural, he had a supernatural option he could still tap into. Oh, does anybody even have a supernatural option? Let me keep going. Listen, reaching requires effort. The word reach is defined as to make a stretch or to become outstretched, to extend to, to get a hold of, to lunge, to approach. That's what it means to stretch. No, 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 I bet there's somebody out there right now thinking, okay, okay, how do I do this type of reaching then? Listen. Reach for your breakthrough with your born again behavior. Oh. Reach for your change with your Christ like choices. Mm. Reach for your future with your faith in the Father. Mm -hmm. Reach for your promise with proper, persistent, proven practices for people of the royal priesthood. See, that's how you reach. You reach in obedience. You reach by trusting God. What I'm seeing is reach for your goals with God. Come on. With all that Paul had going on, right? He never stopped reaching forward, right? Paul knew that what was ahead of him was far greater than anything behind him and was worth reaching for and pressing forward to obtain. Romans 18 reads, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed within us. Suffering was a part of the journey, but it wasn't worthy. Amen. Suffering is part of the journey, but it's not worthy to be compared with what is ahead. Amen. Oh. Amen. It's not worthy to be Amen. No matter how intense our preparation is, it pales in comparison to the prize at the end of the press. It pales in comparison to the prize at the end of the press. Beloved, just as the Apostle Paul was convinced that there was a prize for him that was worth reaching for beyond all the opposition he faced, I want to tell you tonight that there is a prize for you as well that overshadows every hurt, every pain, every hardship, every disappointment you have experienced in your walk with the Father. There is a prize for you that recompenses every sacrifice you have ever made, every cheat that you chose to turn, every offense you forgave, and every grudge that was held against you, there is a prize. Mm -hmm. There is a prize for every grace you extended that went unreciprocated. There's a prize. For every hidden gender that you were victimized by, there's a prize. For every relational, mental, emotional, physiological sucker punch that landed on your heart, there is a prize. The question is, are you willing to reach for the prize? That's the word for my reach yeah. for the prize. Listen, when, when, when Paul was nearing the end of his journey, when his assignment was winding up, in 2 Timothy, he's writing a letter to his spiritual son, the fourth of chapter 7 and 8. Paul says this, I fought the good fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I fought the good fight. never stop reaching. I fought the good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Here's the prize. Henceforth. <laughs> See, he can say henceforth because he knew that he kept on reaching. Yeah. Henceforth, there is laid up a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. I'm glad you got it up there, Doctor. <laughs> and not to the only. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, Paul ain't the only one yeah. that there's a pride laid up for it. At the end of the day, somewhere in the future, beyond 2023, there's a prize laid up for you and I at the end of the day. But only to all them also who love his appearing. Is there anybody here who loves the appearing of Jesus? Is there anybody here that is waiting? Is there anybody here that longs to see it? Is there anybody here who hopes to be there when the trumpet sounds and will be caught up to meet him? Who, for those who love his appearing, never stop reaching for the prize, never stop pressing to the mark. I am thankful today that.
that you and I also have a prize that we can continue to reach for in the future. I dare somebody right now to turn to your neighbor and say, reach! reach. Find another person real quick and turn to them and say, stretch! stretch. Look one more person in their eyes and say, press on! Christ Jesus. Read! 